I'm McLean, and I've been a metalhead for the past 13 years. It started for me when I was in middle school. I remember I listened to that first metal song, and it just took me to a whole different planet, man. It started out with a lot of the basic stuff, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, but I quickly needed the stronger stuff, and I started hitting up the death metal and the black metal, and once I hit that, there was just no going back. So after spending my middle school years of just being a metal user, I ended up trying to get into the metal dealing game when I was in high school. I'd bring CDs into school and try to sell them to the other kids and get them hooked. But eventually they caught up with me, the school found out, they kicked me out, my parents found out, they kicked me out too. So I just went into the workforce from there, but I just couldn't stop the habit, you know. I ended up bringing CDs into work and try to sell them it there, but... I'd get canned and then I'd move on to another job and the cycle would just repeat itself over and over and over again. He said he doesn't know where it started. Man, I'll tell you where it fucking started. One day I was going through the basement and I found his old stash. I bet he didn't tell you guys that he was Metalhead too when he was younger. Yeah, I was just going through some boxes, found his old stash, and there it was, Black Sabbath, Paranoid. Put that needle right on that vinyl. Never turned back, man. Every conversation with McLean turns into a screaming match. Not out of anger or anything, just because he can't hear anymore. McLean. Huh? Do you want to order some pizza? What? Pizza! Meba. Pizza. I, I can't fucking hear you. I got the fucking fridge in one ear. I got you in the other. I got nothing. Close the fridge. Huh? Close the fridge. What? Do you want pizza? Huh? Once McLean spent 14 hours sewing patches onto a vest, his fingertips were so raw for about a week and a half that he couldn't manually use utensils. I had to spoon feed him that entire time. Metal is taking its physical tolls on my body, but you know, I don't really mind. That just comes with the territory. I got a constant ringing in my ears. I can't really hear no more from all the concerts. My neck and back are all messed up. I can't really bend or twist anymore. Uh, my vocal cords are all shredded to shit. We're trying to do guttural vocals. Countless needle injuries from sewing, you know, but that's just part of the lifestyle, man. What are you gonna do? I'm Allison, and I'm McLean's roommate and former co-worker. Uh, we met at work, and we hit it off, and he needed a place to stay, and I had a spare room. Things were going pretty well at first, but then the problems started to show themselves pretty quickly. It started out him playing his music loud maybe once a day, but then it was multiple times a day. And then it was all day and all night. I've probably heard Rain and Blood more times in its entirety than any normal person should. McLean ended up losing his job after he got into an argument with another coworker. Uh, the coworker said that Metal was gay, so McLean threatened to chainsaw gut fuck him. Uh, management couldn't decide whether that was a threat of murder or sexual violence, so eventually they decided it was both and let him go. For the past several months, he's not been paying his half of the rent. At the first of the month, he's always saying he doesn't have the money, but whenever I check the mail, there's always a new patch, a new CD, or a new denim vest. Over the years, McLean's borrowed probably around $3,000 from me, and I believe he spent it on metal paraphernalia, CDs, t-shirts, concert tickets, you name it. He told me it was for the dentist, but I realized he was lying when nothing changed with his teeth. His language has changed quite a bit since I've known him. He used to speak normally, but now he uses words like metal and brutal all the time. When my grandpa died, he said it was totally metal. 
when I had my first child, he called me up and said it was fucking brutal. Hi, my name is Greg, and I'm a metal interventionist. Okay, as you know, my name is Greg, and I'm a metal interventionist. Um, I've been doing this for around 10 years, and I'm also a recovering metalhead. Uh, I got clean after uh, my family intervened, um, after a three-day head-banging uh, session. I destroyed all the cartilage in my neck and my upper spine, and they'd had enough. Enough was enough, so they intervened, and now look at me. Okay, you guys need to know that uh, because, because I went through this, I uh, know what it's going to be like. Um, I'm going to intervene on McLean. He's going to resist. He's um, going to try to revert. He's going to be a little bit angry, maybe a little bit defensive. But uh, you have to tell him that his uh, behavior can no longer be tolerated and uh, we need to do something about it, but we have to establish a bottom line. So what I need to know is what are your bottom lines? Well, the bottom lines I have come up with is to stop aiding his physical repercussions that metal has caused him. Uh, no more picking things up when he gives himself whiplash from too much head banging. No more untangling his hair when it gets caught in the pins in his vest. Uh, most importantly, I'll have to kick him out. Uh, I'm not sure how that one will turn out though. He's always talking about how brutal it would be to live in the woods among the squirrels. My bottom lines are no more lending him money because I know where it's all going and I stop teaching him sign language because that will really hurt his ability to communicate from the hearing loss. My biggest concern is how dependent McLean is on Carlene and Allison and whether or not they're going to be able to handle him if he reverts. Hi McLean. What's up? I'm great. I don't care who you are. What's going on here? Well, your friends called me because uh, they're concerned about you and they want to help Concerned? Uh, I don't need fucking help with nothing. Well, why don't you just have a seat? What? Have a seat. And, not, and, and we'll talk about this. I don't know what you guys want from me. I'm not changing shit. What's going on here? Well, why don't you just listen to what they have to say? And... I'll hear you. I don't know if I'm going to listen. Okay. We'll, we'll find out. Okay, so your friends are going to read their letters, express their concerns. And then uh, we'll uh, find out how you feel about that. All right, well, I, I can tell you how I'm feeling right now, but you can read your dumb little letters. Go ahead. Uh, I don't care. McLean, we've known each other for a few years, and I have seen metal take a toll on your physical and mental health. The constant, I'm fine. Yeah. The constant concussions, whiplash, and suing injuries have put you in the hospital multiple times. I can no longer watch you harm yourself while going into a headbanging fit. You don't know what you're talking about. We're offering you this gift of treatment so you can get your life back in order. Work said they would rehire you if you get treatment and apologize for what you said. I ain't apologizing to that guy for shit, okay? That's just not happening. If you choose not to accept this gift, I will have no choice but to kick you out of the apartment. That's fine. I can fucking live in the woods. I no longer care for you when you accidentally harm yourself. Please accept this and get help to me. Next fucking letter. I mean, that meant nothing to me. Go, go ahead. I'm, I'm not changing nothing. McLean, you being a metalhead has negatively affected my life in the following ways. Your constant borrowing of money to buy band merch has put me in serious financial trouble. I, I need the dentist. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, my baby needs food. Your open threats to kill all posers have led to the police visiting me on more than one occasion. They are always trying to pump me for information that would attach you to local violent crimes. We've been through that. Well, go on, finish your letter. Finally, I can no longer tell my family or friends that I am associated with you because of how you act in social situations. You scream Slayer at the top of your lungs at every party. I'm, just, I'm trying to be fucking festive. Okay, go on, whatever. Every time I introduce you to a female friend of mine, you try to harass them to listen to Bath Roy. 
It's fucking bathroom. You get it right, lady. It's humiliating and embarrassing to let people know we're friends. If you don't get help today, I will cut you off financially and emotionally. We will no longer be friends. I'll never speak to you again. Please get help today. You know what? I'm going to tell you guys something. You guys don't fucking get it. That's what the problem is here. You guys just don't listen to me. You don't understand the lifestyle. That's what you guys don't get. You don't get it. You don't fucking get it. I don't know who the hell this jackass is, but he doesn't get it either. He's here to help you. I don't need help. <laughs> I haven't lived like this for so fucking long. Okay. It's never too late to change. But when does this treatment start? Right now. I can't. I can't go now. I got. I got concert tickets like this weekend. There okay. hasn't been tots in a year. They're not I, happening right now. I got patches to sew on vests. Can I have, it can be done later. I, they're, it sounds like I'm not going to be allowed to sew at this fucking place, wherever I'm going. So, McLean, if you say yes, we're prepared to enroll you in a 90-day detox program where you'll be exposed to many different genres of music and you'll have access to a wide variety of many different colors of clothing. Uh, you'll get a shave and a haircut, um, probably a bath, um, and um, all you have to do is say yes. Fine, I'll fucking go. Let's get this over with. I'm not. I'm not changing. So you'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> this is right. This is right. <laughs>